Hello you awesome people and welcome to this interesting lecture. Allow me to share the purpose behind creating this demo first. We have designed this demo specifically for IT professionals who have a basic understanding of Kubernetes but haven't had hands-on experience yet. Don't worry, we are here to support you in every step and ensure you get your hands dirty with Kubernetes. Our focus will primarily be on practical implementation rather than theoretical discussions. However, if you would like to stay engaged, you can go through this article that I have prepared for you. It follows the same steps which we will be covering in this demonstration. I would love for you to try out the commands together with me. By the end of this demonstration, I promise you will feel much more confident about Kubernetes concepts like deployment, pod, volume, config map and more. The reason for my promise is simple. We will be tackling a real world problem and we will explore how to approach and solve it within the Kubernetes ecosystem. So let's dive in and have some fun while learning. Let's start with this problem statement. So our task is to find a way in Kubernetes to grab the HTML of a given URL and store it in a file in such a way that it can be viewed later. Essentially, what I mean here is this file should remain available even if our program completes its execution. Sure. So we want to run our web scrapping program and because we are dealing with Kubernetes, it has to run in a pod, which is the smallest and simplest unit of deployment. But pod can go down and I don't want to manually bring it up every time if it is stopped for whatever reason. So we need replica set to manage our pods. Yes, a replica set is responsible for maintaining a stable set of replicas of a pod and it does this by creating or deleting pods as needed. It monitors the state of the pods it manages and if a pod fails or is deleted, it replaces it with a new one to maintain the desired number of replicas. Alright, it is time to work with pods using kubectl and gain some command level knowledge. So please let me switch to this console and start working with kubectl. So, in the beginning, let's ensure there is no pod and then we will proceed to create one. So kubectl get and what we are looking for is pod. So we can type pod or maybe we can use the shortcut of po. Okay, I'll go with full pod and then hit enter. And we, as we can see, there is no resource which is pod in this case found in the default namespace. If you are searching for pods in some other namespace, you can just specify that other namespace name. Okay, fine. So there is no pod and we want to create one. For creating a pod, we can use kubectl run. And assuming we don't know the full command, we can always use the help like this and just go through the help section and figure out the appropriate command for your requirement. Okay, so I am looking for something very similar to this. So what I want to do is kubectl run. I want to name my container as busybox and its image has to be busybox only. Okay. Hit. I don't want to use nginx because it is bulkier in size than busybox. I want to keep it very simple. Let me hit enter. And as you can see, the busybox pod is created successfully. Let me use the previous command again and see it is already created and now it is in crash loop back off stage. This should not be seen as an error because while creating the pod, we did not specify any command. What this means is immediately when the container came up, 
because it did not have any action to perform it just died so it enter into this state you don't believe me you can use this command like this so run busy box and i'm giving a name as second container this time and let's specify a command which is sleep for 50 seconds hit enter and the pod is created successfully if you want to see the status you can see it is running okay and because this time we have specified some sleep time as command for this container for this reason it is not expected to die immediately okay clearing my screen if we want to see the different events going on for our pod we can use kubectl describe command and what is that we want to describe is pod and then we just have to give the name of our pod so for example if i want to see the events for busy box not just events it will completely describe the pod whose name is busy box and okay describe i missed r let me hit enter again you can see along with all different details it is having these events also so this is the complete description of our pod okay likewise if you want to see the logs being written inside our pod we can use kubectl logs command and just specify the name of our pod and it is expected to show the logs but in this case there is no statement being written so we can't really expect an output here and in the end if you want to delete the pod we can delete it like this and you can specify the force and our pod is deleted successfully right let me clear my screen okay we created our first pod with a simple imperative command however let me tell you it is very straightforward to obtain the declarative yaml statement from this imperative command itself let's see how so we just need to pass this switch dry run equals to client and the output that we want is yaml and let let me hit enter and that's it so here is the declarative yaml schema that we can use for creating the same pod right and if you want to get this yaml into a file format you can just specify the file name for example pod.yaml hit enter and the file is created successfully yes all right this is the basic introduction of kubectl commands and we are good for now okay next a deployment provides a way to declaratively define the desired state of a pod or a set of pods it takes care of creating updating and deleting replica sets as needed to meet the desired state it provides a way to perform rolling updates of an application by gradually replacing old pods with the new ones it is like in real world almost we never create a pod itself they eventually gets created as a result of deployment stateful set job or daemon set etc that is a different story here also what we will create is a deployment which can have certain number of replicas and inside it we will specify our pod definition and essentially the web scraping logic yes sounds like a good plan let's go for it this is my kubernetes cluster deployed in microsoft azure cloud and i will be interacting with this using kubectl commands from my system all we need to do is grab the credentials and we are good to go for the scope of this demonstration you can continue with any kubernetes cluster of your choice however in the last step we will perform a step where azure storage classes will be used but it is okay to skip that particular step okay now let's dive right in and create our deployment we will start with an imperative command and then move to a declarative one 
Superb. Let's get started. All right. It is time to do some practical and create our first deployment in Kubernetes. But before doing anything, let me just show you that presently there is no pod exist in the default namespace of our Kubernetes cluster. Okay. Clearing my screen and we want to create something. So kubectl create. What is that we want to create? We want to create a deployment. So we can type deploy or deployment, whichever is comfortable for you. If you want to go through the help section, you can just pass this help switch and, and get the help section. So I want to give the name busy box deploy and what is the name of image that we want to use for this deployment? It is busybox. So busybox and how many replicas we want? We can specify that like this replicas equals to three. Okay. Hit enter and just see whether our deployment is created or no. So indeed our deployment with the name busybox hyphen deploy is getting created but presently there is no replica which is in ready state means our pods are still getting created okay. So let me just quickly see whether what is the state of pods so kubectl get pod and you can see and as we can see our pods were created but right now they are not in ready state because we did not specify any command to run. So they were created and now they are completed also. That is the reason there is nothing in the ready state in our deployment also. This doesn't look good. So let me just delete this deployment. Deploy. What is the name? Busy box. Deploy. Hit enter. And now. As you can see with the deletion of the deployment, these pods are also gone. Okay. Let me clear my screen. And now again, we want to create a deployment similar to how we did it earlier. Only difference is this time we want to specify the command that we want to run inside our pod. So just we can specify this and hit enter and you can see our deployment is created successfully and all three replicas are in ready state okay we can separately view our pods also and all of them are in running state also if you want to describe and get more details about this deployment it's very much possible so busybox deploy hit enter and you can see all different details about this deployment are present over here. Imperative commands are quick and easy to execute, offer more flexibility than declarative commands and provide immediate feedback. However, they lack reproducibility, are harder to automate and are more error prone. For example, easily for the need of couple of more customizations, your imperative command can look like this with no definite order for these parameters. This doesn't sound very readable, isn't it? Well, the solution to this problem is declarative statement. Let's explore it. In Kubernetes, a declarative statement refers to the approach of specifying the desired state of your application in a configuration or manifest file. It involves defining the desired state of the resources you want to create or manage rather than providing explicit instructions on how to achieve that state. Both YAML and JSON formats are allowed in Kubernetes but almost always you will see YAML format being preferred. Okay. Okay. Now let me pull up this Visual Studio code and because I have got Kubernetes extension installed. For me, it is very straightforward to write the Kubernetes manifest file. So I can just create, for example, deploy.yaml file, hit enter. And now I'm pressing control plus spacebar. So what I'm looking for is Kubernetes deployment. And yeah, 
a default template is generated for me by this extension which I can further modify as per my needs. This is one way of generating your Kubernetes manifest. Another way is generating it with the help of imperative command that we were working on previously. So let me go to the command prompt. Okay, so this is the command that we used to create our deployment, right? I am just not okay with this busybox deploy name because it does not indicate it is a deployment for the web scraping program. So I just want to rename it to make it more descriptive. Also, what we want is dry run equals to client. The output format we want is YAML. Then here is our command and I want to push it to which uh, file uh, my file name is let's say step 0 dot yaml and i'll say step 0 deployment dot yaml i just want to indicate that this is the you know base file which we have generated and on top of this we will make further modifications right let me hit enter it is expected that my file is created successfully and there we go using this simple imperative command we have generated the deployment manifest which we can use to create the Kubernetes deployment, right? And this one is more close to our requirements than the one generated by Visual Studio Code because here it has already taken care of the values that we specified. For example, image has to be this one, replicas are these many. So these values are already taken care inside our manifest file generated as a result of this statement. Yes? All right, my dear students, great news. We have just accomplished a major milestone by creating a foundational deployment manifest that we can apply to Kubernetes and generate our deployment. In the next lectures, we are going to customize and improve it step by step, diving into various fascinating concepts along the way. And what is our ultimate goal? Well, it is to create a deployment manifest that perfectly meets our needs for running a web scrapping container, which we started with. Trust me, this journey will be both enjoyable and informative. I am excited to guide you through these steps. So stay tuned and let's meet in our next lecture. Take care. Thank you.